right, guys, here with Josh Morrow, defensive end with Arizona Cardinals, good friend of ours, hometown superstar from LD Bell. Um, he played played growing up with uh, the Rocket, as they used to call him back in the day, Eddie Foster from the Ville. Josh shaking his head, really doesn't like doesn't like the Rocket too much there. Um, Josh, uh, you know, let's just start with um, if you could just tell us a little bit about yourself and, and where you grew up and, and how you know this uh, joker over here, Eddie. Uh, I grew up in the area, uh, been here since you know, kindergarten through, uh, through senior year. Been playing against Eddie since about sixth or seventh grade in uh, Mid City, either basketball or I think it was basketball initially, and then he went to Harwood. I played him there, and then um, when he went to college, I you know I played him. I think our senior year was the only time we played football against each other, and um, so I've, I've known Eddie, been friends with him, been competing against him since uh, since we were since we were kids. So. Uh, it's kind of how we're connected up here. Yeah, man, I like it. I like it. That's you know, that's one of the biggest things about what we're trying to do here at Elite is just you know, I, we all grew up here, and you know, at the end of the day, we were lucky and blessed to grow up in, in such a great area where uh, not too much to worry about, and you you meet great people, and, and and we compete, you know, old school on the blacktop or wherever, you know, and that's usually where you make a lot of your friends are, you know, competing against you know a guy from across the town that everybody talks about, and you look forward to those competitions. Um, Josh, you're, you're lucky enough to play in the NFL, and, and, and you know, for many people, they dream of it, work hard for it, and, and for whatever happens or anything, it, it, uh, it doesn't all the way happen the way I think it is. If you could tell about, you know, just a little bit about your, your college and kind of first year in, in the pros a little bit, almost, let's just go through, you know, what college did you go to, uh, what scholarship did you get, and just kind of run us through that real quick, if you, if you don't mind, brother. Um, so I, I didn't actually get my, my first offer until the summer going into my senior year. It was Boise State, and then um, I had gone to a few camps. Stanford was one of them. They had a coach come through my junior year in the spring. Uh, I wasn't able to practice because of a back issue, um, but they had showed interest on me to come out. So I went to a camp. Uh, they came to a game my senior year. Uh, I played well enough. They offered me that night, actually, while I was out with my friends and um, visited. Ended up going there. Uh, kind of a no-brainer after I went out there. Um, <laughs> Beautiful school, kind of want to get away, you know, from uh, Texas and the whole Big 12 scene. You know, I kind of want to do, do something different. So California was a good, good, uh, a good, uh, good route for yeah, me. You can't lose there. No, Ever. and uh, Coach Harbaugh was pretty convincing, you know, <laughs> and Andrew Luck, and he, you know, he just he had that look in his eye. I knew we were going to be successful. <laughs> look in his eye. So, uh, so yeah, I went out. I went out there, um, and I would say personally for me, and I think other guys would agree to this, the biggest jump. Um, is from co is from high school to college. Really? You know the mar the margin of difference in talent between college and pro is either down to injury or opportunity. You know, yeah, there's yeah, guys yeah, that yeah. are freak athletes that have all the tools that uh, work hard. You know, it's nothing. Uh, you know, it's nothing their fault. They yeah. may have an injury. They may have a setback. They may have a suspension. Whatever it may be. Um, but I think that that jump from being uh, the big dog, you know, your senior in high school, yeah. kind of just, yeah. you know, we got to play with technique. You kind of can just go out there go and manhandle kids. Big, yeah. big fish in a small pond. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. then when, when you jump to college, you know, it's the best guys from everywhere, yeah. not just your yeah. state, it's from yeah. every state, you know, Wisconsin, New York, Florida, California, wherever it may be. And so uh, I think that transition from high school to college, that, that took me a lot longer than uh, the jump from college to the NFL, to be honest. Yeah. And I was fortunate enough, uh, you know, God willing, I was no no serious injuries. Um, I had great coaching, great training staff at Stanford, and I think it really prepared me and my teammates for that move to the NFL. Yeah, um, you know, just talking about just, you know, training in general, um, I, you, you kind of touched on some things of, you know, and I try to hit these kids pretty hard with, you know, in your, in your you know, Bedford, Colleyville, um, you know, these school GCISD. districts, GCISD, you know, HEBISD, -E like, mm -hmm. Everybody knew that top dog growing up. That's how you know Eddie. He was a fast guy from, you know, good. Like, you know, and Eddie went to Vanderbilt and, and you know, college scholarship. And those were the best guys you see him. Um, and, and I try to hone in, like, the training part of mindset of, hey, there's, it's, there's, bigger, there's bigger fish out there that I'm at the battle. Am I working hard enough or am I okay with just being the best in, in Grapevine, you know? Um, how how'd you how'd your mindset kind of sit on? I think to touch on that, um, you're so small minded growing up. Uh, mm -hmm. You want to be the best of your school, and then once you're the best of your school, you want to be the best in the district. Then yeah. you want to be the best in the area. Then the best in the state. Well, when you go to college, man, there's guys that are just they're just faster than you. They're just going to be yeah. guys that are just stronger than you. It doesn't yeah. matter how much time you spend running, yeah. how much time you spend lifting. Uh, it's all about uh, your mindset of it's you versus you, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you start comparing yourself to other guys. You start trying to. Uh, beat other guys. I mean, you can always compete. You mm -hmm. never stop competing, especially yeah. against other people. But I'd say the hardest and the most um, 
a, a, the most important competition is against yourself because if you're pushing yourself for yourself to beat personal records, to work harder than you did the day before, to uh, become more flexible, become more explosive, become faster, whatever it is, and you keep improving yourself, you're going to end up in a place that's very successful. My brother actually did uh, a TED talk on his dream was to play in the NFL and be a wide receiver. Yeah. Um, you know, he didn't make it to the NFL, yeah. but in his journey of working hard and pursuing his dream, he earned a scholarship, got his degree, met his wife, has two, almost three beautiful kids, yeah. Yeah. and he's um, the offensive coordinator now at a high school yeah. and working his way up to become a head coach. So um, people get this idea that you have to dream for something, and if you don't, and if you don't reach your set dream, then you failed. Yeah, and that is an absolute fallacy. Right. You know, um, the whole idea of you of you working against yourself every day and you building yourself every day is going to lead to great things. You know, Eddie went to Vanderbilt, got his degree, and now he's set, man. Like he has yeah. no no student debt. No, yeah. Same with my same with you. You know, right. that's a big deal. You know, people look at it. Oh, did you go to the NFL? Are you a Pro Bowl? Or this and the other? Did you get the cars? All the fame. That's all. That's all yeah. window dressing. Yeah. You know. Yeah. When it comes down to real life stuff, you know, you work hard, you're going to end up in a place that you would have never gotten had you not pushed yourself to that, that level. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of one of those things of what's your, what's your definition of success, mm -hmm. right? And, and if you go with uh, what the majority of people say, and it, that's, you know, that's one of those things that I hate when, when people tell kids, you know, like, oh, I want to be in the NFL. And they're like, oh, you know, well, only 1% of blah, blah, blah. Well, I mean, like you start throwing stats on it. So what, am I not supposed to try? Mm -hmm. am, I, am I not supposed to work hard and see what, what I personally can do with what God's given me? Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to just say, oh, you're right. Let me go sit down and just do what everybody else is doing. Um, and that mindset, I, I, I'm visceral mm -hmm. to. Um, you know, it's, and I, I, I was telling some kids this this week, you know, it's, it's, it's not about um, failure. Like you, being embarrassed and failing and, and not reaching your goal you know, you can get over that. But the regret of never trying, I, I, I think the regret eats at you. Mm -hmm. um, I'd rather be embarrassed for a little bit and, and, and know I gave it my best than regret never trying and that, having that in the back of my head. Um, you know, I, I know you're in a rush to get out of here. What I want to really go into is, is kind of your journey getting into the NFL. Um, you, you're undrafted. Um, and I was, again, telling some kids the other day that you know, the guys who have careers and, and, you, and you see are, are usually, you know, the guys third, fourth, fifth, on or undrafted guys that have the career. And I said, it's because, you know, they're hungry. They stay hungry. They grind. They, they, that's, that's all they know is having to have that chip on their shoulder or, or whatever it is to, to keep working, to keep getting better, to keep striving. Um, and when some of the, you know, other guys that first round draft picks are, I see when kids go to college and they are a five-star recruit, well, that was the last time you heard of them. Mm -hmm. um, and, and kind of what mindset or, or what you went through to, to, to prove yourself or, or what drives you um, to, to have the career that you've had? Um, I think it's a fight against, you know, self-satisfaction of where you are, or what you're getting to, or um, kind of where your work is, 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 is giving you success in areas. I think just fighting, you know, mediocrity, it's not, you can't, you can't put mediocrity on a scale of everybody, it's yourself. Yeah. What is mediocre to you, you know, because mm -hmm. everyone has different capabilities, yeah. Yeah. different talents, and so... Um, you know, me personally going undrafted, you know, I felt undermined. I felt like I was a draftable player. Obviously, yeah, I think yeah. everybody who is in that position, you know, has to think the same thing. You have to be a confident player if yeah. you, you want to, you know, play well, at that level. At that level, yeah. You yeah, have yeah, to. Yeah, you yeah, have yeah. To. And so, I mean, I, uh, I don't forget it, though. You know, I was with my family there on draft day. Uh, ironically, I actually got a call from the Arizona, uh, Arizona Cardinals defensive line coach in the sixth round. And, uh, Telling me they wanted me there, and I was like, "All right, man. Well, I'm on the board. You can draft me." He's like, "Oh man, we just ran out of draft picks." So, yeah. ironically, I ended up there. I actually, have a, a great relationship. He's a, a great coach and a former player, so I, I learned a lot from him. But just, just personally, man, um, I just don't fall into the trap of of that I've arrived or that I, you know I'm anything. You know, I I have way higher expectations. I have way higher goals than anybody could have ever set for me. That's any coach. That's my parents. That's my brothers. That's my friends. People don't, you know, they try to get reinforcement or, uh, you know, they try to get confidence through through other people's words, through other coaches, you know. Yeah. And I actually, you know, it's nothing against coaches. I despise it. I never wanted to, you know, be the goody two shoes for the coaches. Yeah. I didn't care if they saw me working. Yeah. I knew what I was doing. Yeah. And so, and that leads to confidence, man. Your preparation makes you confident. And so I went undrafted. I was on the practice squad for the Steelers. I got signed to the Cardinals. I ended up starting my first game. I played well because every day of practice with the Steelers, I treated like game day. And I felt like I was being, you know, short, you know, I felt, I felt like I wasn't appreciated yeah. as a player and as a, uh, 
as a person at that point. And so when I did get signed and I was able to play, man, I'll, I'll never forget that game because it, it, it felt natural. Yeah. It, it, I didn't do anything different. Yeah. I didn't get signed and then say, oh, it's game time. I got to go. I approached every day of practice like that. I was out there with Marquise Pouncey, David DeCastro, those boys trying to knock their heads off at practice yeah. so, that, so that I could get moved up. And then when I did get moved up, that I could play at a very high level. And um, I'm not looking back on that, you know. Um, that's that's my journey. Everyone's is different. I'm not going to sit here and try to make it sound like a sob story, you know. Yeah, yeah, I did yeah, get yeah, signed, yeah. you know, as an undrafted right. free agent. And yeah. so I'm blessed. I have, I have talents. But at the same time, you can never be satisfied with where you're at. And that's just that's not just in sports. That's in your friendships, your relationships, in your faith. Yeah. And the day you become complacent is the day that either someone else is taking what you want yeah. or you're, you're missing out or you're losing what you already had. Yeah. And so um, that's the approach I had. And I think that's the biggest thing for kids uh, coming up in training and just learning through middle school and high school is that it's uh, it's all about self-motivation and pushing yeah. yourself. Yeah. Because if you look for other people to lean on, eventually there's going to become a time in your life where you're old enough and you're going to be you're going to be the only one there looking in the mirror. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I think there's a lot of parallels between football, training, and life. And I just think the biggest thing is just Understanding your capabilities and maximizing your potential. I mean, I I I love it, Josh. I love I love the passion. I love the fire, and and I try to tell these kids. A lot of them is is, you know, we get caught in society where um, we're supposed to do certain things, and that's what that's what you're supposed to do, um, and that you're supposed to do or letting someone down because you you didn't do this or you know you're you're gonna make your family look bad or whatever. I, I kind of get frustrated with that because. I'm one of those dream big guys. Um, I'm one of those guys that, hey, I, I want to do this. I want to be the best at whatever I do, and, and that's what I want to do. Don't tell me you can't do it or I don't know how to do it or I'm going to put the work in because work always shows up. You know, mm-hmm. At the end of the day, hard work, dedication, that always shows up. And to set your, your goals high, always set your goals high. Always try to go for the top. Why, why not? Where, where else is there to go if you're not going to the top? You just, you just want to sit on the couch and, and hang out and, and do nothing. Um, because you're afraid of what people might say or because you're afraid of failure. Um, you know, you, if, if you work hard, you give everything you got, um, same with school, studying, anything, um, you, you're going to end up in a, in a good place. Um, and, you know, if you, if you ended up in a good place because of your hard work or, you know, um, whatever you choose your goals want to be, I mean, I, I think that's everything. I think that's, you know, and the reason I like working with kids too is they have dreams. You know what I mean? Like they still look out and, and have the big eyes and have the amazement and like maybe one day and, and, and are excited and they can put the work in. Um, I, I wish everybody could, could do that and be that instead of falling into just settling. Mm-hmm. I think that's the worst thing. And, and you can leave right there, just settling. Mm-hmm. That, I, that's a visceral reaction too. Um, and, and that's what we kind of try to drive home here, um, you know, is 110%, 100% of the time. My standard's 110%. You know what I mean? Um, so, um, I mean, I, I, I want to thank you for coming coming in and, and doing this with us. I, I appreciate you when you ever come in and work out and, and seeing you work out here. It, it's, it's awesome. And, you know, it's it's cool to see you and Eddie, you know, bang around. And it's kind of, you know, what this area that we live in um, is cool. You know, we we live in a good area and, and people usually stay in contact and stay friends. And, you know, it's all love all the time. And that's what we, we try to do here um, is just show, hey, we're all family. You know, we're all we're all just good people trying to trying to live a dream and trying to and trying to have a good time and, you trying know, help out whenever we can. You know? mm-hmm. Do what? I'm trying to improve ourselves every day. Trying to improve ourselves every day. Coming for to do every day. I, hear, I appreciate y'all having me, man, and uh, let me come work here. And it's it's cool seeing what y'all are doing because yeah. it's. It's something that I envisioned, you know, um, a few years ago. You know, something I wanted to do post career, and so uh, seeing y'all put the put the foundation down and just uh, the program y'all have, the way y'all train, seeing the enthusiasm, the excitement of the kids here. You know, it's not uh, it's not work for them. it's, yeah. it's fun. You know, yeah. it's fun work. Yeah, they're working hard, but it's never uh, it's never looked at as, as an obstacle. It's looked at as a challenge for them to take on head first. And so, I uh, appreciate y'all having me, man, and uh, thank y'all for always, for always having me through here. Well, man, that, you know, best of, best of luck this season. Uh, you know you're going to do good because you put the work in. Yes, sir. 110, 100% of the time. Yes, sir. Uh, so, yeah, man, uh, you know, we, we, you know, praying for you and hoping everything goes well. Hope, hope you do great. Just, you know, um, have a great season. And I appreciate you talking about it. Appreciate y'all. All right, brother. All right, brother. Matthew's coming around the edge that way. There go. Know that we don't that make it when they take a hard inside so release and get the fun and Morrow just went right around him.
sucks. Still like a two buck, you move without two bucks. Get from the class to the app, how we grew up. Puffing on these two blunts, but better than school lunch. You can keep your fruit punch, you can keep your crew cuts. I'ma keep it stacked to the class if I crew cuts. I'ma do me, then maybe we could do lunch. And you might have moved out, but you never moved up. We party from park, bench to park, place apartments. So take it to the base for the place that it started. The brakes is amazing, then hit it, which retarded. You hear it at the back from the